I'm Jamie Buckingham. Shalom from Israel. Those who have mastered the victorious Christian life have discovered a wonderful secret. God is in charge. I cannot tell you what joy, peace, and comfort I had when I discovered that. I was sitting in a doctor's office as he glanced over the results of the tests he had taken. Looking up, he said matter-of-factly, your body is filled with cancer. You have but a short time to live. My first reaction was shock, followed by fear. And then suddenly, I was overwhelmed with the truth of something I had been preaching all my adult life. God is in charge. I did not have to fight this battle. God was going to fight it for me. As a result, I'm sitting here in front of this camera, alive and healthy. He is a God of love, a God of miracles. And when you grasp that wonderful truth that God is in charge, you enter into what the Bible calls spiritual rest. It's not a passive rest. It's an active rest that keeps you going during tough times, knowing God cares for his children. Come with me now far south in Israel to the Negev Desert. I was there during the month of March on the day before Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of Lent here at a place called Brook Paran. God's people first learned the secret of spiritual rest. This is the wilderness of Zin, far to the south in the nation of Israel in what is known as the Negev Desert. Here the children of Israel wandered for 38 years following their exodus from Egypt. It's a wild, barren land. Uh, it's on the border of the Sinai Peninsula. Here the Israelites came after leaving Mount Sinai, camped at Kadesh Barnea. There Moses sent 12 spies into the promised land called Canaan. Ten of the spies returned, saying it was impossible to capture the land because of the wall cities and the giants. We were as grasshoppers to them, the cowardly spies said. Only two of the twelve, Joshua and Caleb, brought back a positive report. The land is flowing with milk and honey, they said. Sure, they're giants and wall cities, but so what? God told us to take the land, and with his help, we can do anything. But the people refused to march in. As a result, God condemned the entire nation of people to remain in this wilderness wandering until the adult population died and a new generation of young Israelis following Joshua entered the promised land and indeed captured it. Giants, wall cities, and all. This area of Israel is crammed with beauty. South of where I am standing today, here in the Negev Desert, are these magnificent rock formations called the Pillars of Solomon. These colorful mountains with their reddish cliffs are named after King Solomon, who mined and smelted copper at this very place. Just beyond them is the modern Israeli city of Elat, Israel's southernmost seaport on the Gulf of Elat, which connects to the Red Sea. Elat is not only a thriving seaport, it's a favorite place for snorkeling and scuba diving. From the underwater observatory, you can see hundreds of different species of tropical fish. It's like being lured into a vast saltwater aquarium, surrounded on all sides by God's marvelous undersea creatures. Now, today, I'm here overlooking this canyon or wadi called the Brook Peron. It's a, actually a dried riverbed which crosses the desert in southern Israel. Near here, on October 29, uh, 1956, after persistent terrorist raids from Egypt, Israeli army gathered its tanks to prepare for war. Recalling God's words to Joshua, wherever you put your foot, the land is yours. They invaded Egypt's Sinai Peninsula to the south, determined to put a stop to the terrorist raids. 
striking as lightning. They pushed the Egyptians all the way back to the Gulf of Suez. The UN ceasefire was arranged one week later, and an uneasy truce reigned until June 5, 1967. On that day, Egypt, Jordan, and Syria joined forces determined to wipe Israel off the face of the earth in what was called the Six-Day War. Israel not only defeated all three nations, but recaptured the entire Sinai Peninsula and captured the city of Jerusalem, unifying it under Jewish rule for the first time since it was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. Who could believe, looking around, that this quiet desert could be the scene of so much unrest? When Moses came through here on his way to the Promised Land, the Bible says the children of Israel found rest in this place ever since. The brook Peron has been associated with rest, spiritual rest. Actually, it's not really a brook. It's a dried water course, uh, which is really called Wadi Jirafi, taken from the word Jirafa, which means to wash or rake the soil away. It's a reference to the strong torrents which tear through here in the rainy season, causing great soil erosion. But I'm not here today to talk about military history, nor about geography. As we approach the Lenten season, we should quiet our hearts and spirits in order to receive God's rest, His peace. That's why I've come to this lonely desert place. The writer of the book of Hebrews, who mentions Peron, where the Israelites disobey God by not going into the Promised Land, says that only those who obey God will find rest. Now, the rest of God is offered to all people through Jesus Christ. The people of Jesus' day were under great oppression. Jewish law was impossible to keep, and as a result, they lived in constant condemnation to those people as to us. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Today, as you prepare for Lent, which begins tomorrow on Ash Wednesday, find a quiet place, get alone, bow your knees, and receive God's rest.